<laughs> That's okay. The koala bear has crashed the intro, everybody. Justin was not like paying attention to his layers. Good morning, Reaper audience. This is Anne uh, from Reaper, and we are here at Pro Tips. It is obviously too early for all of us. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Justin nodding over there. Um, but, hi. So today, as the uh, crashing koala uh, has implied, we are working on koalas. Because, although we have been supporting uh, Victoria Miniatures um, fundraiser to help with the Australian uh, wildfire relief, we are also doing our own thing. And some of you may have seen Jason Wiebe post about this on social media um, or what have you. But we have cute little koala bears that Jason sculpted. Jason is really into um, charity causes and helping. Uh, he's just a great guy. And so a lot of our charity figures in the past, over the past two decades, have been sculpted by Jason, who just pretty much sculpts it and says, hey, Reaper, let's do, let's do a fundraiser for the charity event. And Reaper's like, dude, yes. And hey, you sculpted a miniature for it. Awesome. Um, so that is the case uh, this year. I, I assume that uh, Jason probably saw that we were already supporting Victoria's. So now we're going to do our own. And supposedly they go live right around now. But I haven't double checked with Ron on that. That's what Ed told me yesterday. So if they don't go live now, I would expect our koala bears to be live today. So keep an eye on our social media uh, for the promotion at whatever time it goes up. So we're going to be working on koala bear Hope, who is a cute little girl who has a little tree that she holds. She's got a shovel and she's planting stuff. Um, one of our other koala bears has a shovel and is obviously fighting fires. Um, he's got a shovel and a fire axe. Um, they will be call, fa call fast. I just don't know. I was told they should be on sale like now, but I'm not certain. I didn't check this morning. So if I haven't reminded anybody and if like people are running around like, you know, they usually do because we're so busy. I wouldn't guarantee that it went live at 11, but it was supposed to go live this morning. Just look at our social media. I'm sure that John will be posting when these little guys go live. Two things so, real quick. Yeah. Two, two things. First thing is... Um, I would say that, uh, Anne, I think that you are, of all the people here, the most qualified to paint. <sighs> Justin, you many. went there. You um, went there, Justin. Beyond that, I think that... Uh, How much XP does he need to lose for that pun? Uh, I, I think that uh, um, Quality Control oh, did a good geez. job when they sent that many up here to us. Um, Can I quit? Can and, I just quit? Uh, <laughs> well, okay, last thing, uh, I'm going to go ask Ron about when they go live, just to confirm. Yeah, sibling, I'm with you. Please, Justin, please. Yeah, 50 DKP minus. That's what I told him, Silverthorn, earlier today when he tried this. So, yes, um, and you're going to have to look at my band-aided thumb today, everybody, because, yeah, he stayed up all night. You're right. It took him all night to come up with this, OMG. Um, but anyway, I sliced my thumb this morning, so you'll have to look at my ugly band-aid while we're painting. Sorry. Yes, yes, all right. So we're going to work on... No, no more puns, please. Oh, you put Moobot put up my Patreon. It's like, hey, hey, do that. Quick, deflect from the puns and talk about your Patreon. So yeah, hi. I have a Patreon and it's really cool. And so many of you have joined, by the way, over the last two weeks. I am so grateful to you guys for supporting me. Like so, so, so many. Um, I know, I know Cybestorm is one. I know there's so many of you. I needed to make a list before I came on today to say thank you for everybody, but I've definitely been sending out a thank you now that my special offer is run out. So bear in mind. Yeah, and now the bear puns, except that you can't make bear puns, guys. I just lectured Justin about this. I read up on koala science yesterday. They are not bears. They are marsupials, and real koala people will get very mad at you if you say koala bear. It's absolutely not kosher. Um... And besides being not kosher, it's incorrect, scientifically. Um, essentially what happened is when uh, they first, uh, when settlers first came to Australia, they thought they looked like little bears, and so they called them koala bears. But the proper term is now koala. So your bear puns have no, uh, have no, yeah. You can make as many quality control jokes as you like. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yes, Gypsy Jillian, thank you, Gypsy Jan, thank you. Um, but yes, you can totally make as many koala jokes as you like, but they are not actually bears. They are marsupials. They have pouches, uh, just like kangaroos do, although actually forward-facing instead of upward-facing, and their little koalas are called joeys, just like kangaroos, actually. They have no bearing. Yes, correct, Nomad Zeke. That's it. All right. No, no more. J I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They're not bears. They're just not bears. Do you want to know a creepy, creepy thing about koalas? We should really go to like minicam, but you know, I have a creepy factoid about koalas, guys. And it, actually, I think it's fascinating. 
But of all the animals, did you know, of all the animals in the world, koalas are the only animal that has unique fingerprints like humans. Really? Yes. This oh. is a scientific fact. They actually have, and even weirder, although you can tell a koala fingerprint from a human fingerprint, there are still many similarities. So just the weirdness of the world there, two things have fingerprints that are unique, us and koalas. Unpopular opinion. The more I look at this koala, the more I kind of find them a little terrifying. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look at the claws on that sucker. That's, yeah, that's another good factoid is they've got really strong, sharp claws on their front feet. Um, and they are strong little things. Uh, right. Because I'll, they have to. I'm gonna go to the mini cam now. So. You go to the mini cam so we can like you know uncreep you. Wait, no, the koala's still there. Justin's gonna stare at you all stream. So yeah, so this is Hope. Welcome. This is Hope, and Hope. Obviously, I chose her fur color to be similar to the koala in the picture. Um, although the koala in the picture looks a little bit cooler. Um, but yeah, so as I started out. I started out a lot warmer um, with her fur. Yeah, their claws can cut into bone. They are scary and fierce, yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, this blue. This is my, my new favorite color, blue, by the way. Although it is coming off a little bit darker on the uh, camera than it actually is in person. Um, actually, we are a little bit dark. Can we adjust? Uh, um, what's it? That thing. That thing. Um, you know, that thing that controls brightness and darkness. Anyway, other than the sun and the moon. Um, uh, we totally did not do that. We were bad. Uh, exposure. That's what we need to adjust. But anyway, while I've gotten Justin out from behind his, uh, his closet of doom here um, to come and adjust settings on the camera. Um, huh? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. No, it, it's just um, the, it's too dark. If we could adjust the... Uh, Is it still too dark? Uh, it is darker than the miniature appears. So if we could uh, get a little more exposure, a little higher exposure. I got it. It's all, uh, it's, it's actually not even the light on the ceiling, Evil Elvis. Elvis. It's entirely just uh, camera control. Oh, yeah. Oh, a little bit more. Up. Oh. There you go. Yeah, that's a lot more like it looks in person. So yeah, so that, this is my new favorite blue. But also, yes, that, that went out. We can do it. Oh, okay, I see. So we, we are a little bit, we have a little bit of lack of, um, of light from this side, yes. You can blame, yeah. You can blame Ed for that and Justin. Justin just abandoned me. He's disgusted with having to have gotten out of, out of his chair, his comfy, comfy chair, to uh, come adjust exposure for me. Hey, everybody. All right. But yeah, they are really cute. Uh, Jason, Jason loves animals and he sculpts great animals, so... We're gonna be working on hope, and I'm gonna do. So I started out with her fur. In animals, usually you don't see a pure silvery gray. Like koala on the camera is a little bit of an exception, although even there you can see brown tones around the face and on the sides. Um, the reason for this is that most animals don't have like a pure white undercoat. They actually have more of a cream color. So when you put like sable, sable black hairs over that, you end up getting just a little bit of a brownish gray. So I, when I do animals that are gray, I tend to actually start with a gray with a bit of brown in it. So, oh, and there's Mubat telling us about our bushfire fundraiser with Victoria Miniatures and Trenchworks. Yes. And, and now we'll have our own uh, way to raise money. So that's awesome. But anyway, what I was saying was, so what I did is I started with um, grays with brown in them. And uh, I did add a little bit of pure gray. My first mix for her skin tone, or her fur tone, I should say, um, was weathered stone. And the stone colors are great for gray animals. They're good for wolves as well if you're doing a lighter colored wolf. Um, it is, of course, a, a gray with a bit of brown in it, so it works well for naturalistic. Um, the blue is actually a mix, coffee nerdery beer. Um, see, everybody's into the blue now. <laughs> um, but uh, I will tell you about the blue in just a moment. It, it is a mixture of two colors. It is super easy to make but I may make it as its own color just so people don't have to sit and mix it because I really like it. I'm fond of it. Um, all right, so we started out with a mixture of weathered stone. Actually, sorry, weathered stone and uh, two dry. It's like six weathered stone and two cloudy gray to get this base coat. And then, because I wanted it, after I looked at it, it was a little too brown, so I put a little bit of gray in it. This other one, which I could have used right at the beginning, is wolf gray, which is a great, there we go. Let's get down into the camera here. There we are. 
Wolf Gray it is a little bit grayer than Weathered Stone, but it still has a, quite a bit of brown in it. So for this color, which I decided I would use for my shado- shadows, I actually did a 50-50 mix of Cloudy and Wolf Gray. Now, the blue um, is actually a mixture of my, my, I think, one of the prettiest blues we make. Some of you who are on the Patreon saw that I started the Gemstone Dragon with this. So it's Ultramarine Blue mixed 50-50 with Cloudy Gray. And when you have a really intense color like ultramarine, you can sometimes create some really beautiful colors just mixing it half and half with gray, Um, because this is extremely bright. And so I wanted her dress to be blue, but because she's gray, I had to desaturate it. Because if you remember some of my color theory things from my Patreon or in past discussions on this show, you'll know that a really bright color doesn't necessarily go real well with some grays. It it depends on the color. Blue isn't bad, but the brighter the blue, the more it's going to clash. So I decided to soften the blue with a little bit of cloudy gray, and it works really well now. So there you go. So maybe I'll make it as an actual color where, you know, you can just like squeeze it out of a bottle because it is really pretty. It's my new favorite. Um, but yeah, do 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 do. Thank you. I'm glad that I'm, I'm glad that I'm making good tips this morning because my brain feels like it's a little slow. If it wasn't a little slow, I wouldn't have put a hole in my finger. Um, all right, so let's do some shading. Let me get my glasses on. Granny glasses coming online. And make sure I'm in focus and look at our koala reference because whenever you are painting animals, you should look at a reference. Her face actually has some pretty dark areas. Like either side of the snout looks like it needs a little dark. It needs a little dark up on the head and on the ears that go really dark. There's definitely some black on the ears, so we'll have to figure that in. Um, her, her white isn't going to really come into play much. Maybe just a little bit here and on her paws, her back paws maybe, but most of her, I guess on the interior of her of her paws and her lower arms will get white. But koalas only have white on like the underside of their arms and back limbs and uh, I think her feet are always gray. So we won't have much of her white come through. Maybe a little bit on her chin. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing stippling. Hi, Rhonda, how's it going? Um... But, and yes, hello to everybody who came in that I didn't get a chance to say hi to because I was distracted. So, so yeah, mostly the will be gray and just the underside of the arms and paws will probably be white. So let's do some dark. I don't know that I'm going to do stippling on the fur because it's, um, Jason has sculpted it pretty finely. If you, let me see, can I get it even in focus? You can see his really fine lines that he's put in and that because there's already a texture um, because there's already a texture on this stippling isn't as good stippling is a good way to create texture on a surface that's more flat um, or to bring out tiny little textures maybe I'll do it to try to get that the sabled effect of the fur um, I tried to get close-ups of koala fur and uh, and utterly failed so to, to determine if their fur is dark on the outside if they have guard hairs or if they uh, have it it looks like almost they have darker at the roots fur and then the fur goes lighter to the outside. Um, either way, I'm not certain that we'd be able to get a really good stipple effect. So we'll see, maybe. But because the sculpt has the fur well-defined, it's, it makes it harder to get the effect. So let me just see if I've got it. Yeah, this is dark enough. So I'm going to be, when I do brush strokes on fur, I'm going to be going in the direction the fur is growing. Um, so I'm always going to kind of Go down and pull back and make like a stroke that's in line with this fur. I'm not going to worry about whether I'm actually painting over the strands of fur that are sculpted at this point. I mostly just want to lay down value. So I'm setting up some darker fur. And then when I go into highlight, then I'm going to pay attention to each strand. Okay, who's making trouble here? Is it Paul? He's always making trouble. No, it's Collins. It's Collins. All right. Well, Collins makes trouble at least part of the time. So this is consistent with the reality as we know it. So, <coughs> so no koalas yet uh, for sale? Is anybody oh, determined? No, 11.30. 11.30. All right. They for will Rome, go up. It would be 11.30. Uh, I'm going to get the command put up now to give you guys the SKUs. Can't quite give you links because, uh, wow. Trying to they're, stay they're in focus here. Yet. Yeah, like since the links are not, uh, yeah, links aren't available because they're not live. But once they are live, we can put that up. Oh, uh, let's see. And I think she's got a little bit of dark. And you can kind of take some artistic license. Every koala is different. 
But if you see like definite patterns, like her ears being like that dark with the white on the interior, we definitely want to do that because that's going to give us a lot more realistic koala look. Yeah. And like if I hadn't really looked closely at a bunch of pictures, I wouldn't know that the area around her eyes is actually flesh colored. So I'm going to do that as well. Um, and also her nose, like the nose is actually shiny on koalas, like they've got this big leathery nose. Um, and the reason they have that actually is, and this is super fascinating as well, there are all sorts of fascinating factoids about koalas, by the way, you should read about them. Um, but they have an extremely, like their strongest sense is smell. And part of why that is, other than, you know, sensing when other koalas are intruding into their territory, but part of why that is is that eucalyptus leaves actually have varying levels of toxicity from day to day, week to week, month to month. And so the koala is able to actually smell how much toxicity is in a given set of leaves before it eats them. So it can control how much uh, of that it ingests and thus stay healthy while still meeting its nutritional requirements. And it has the lowest metabolism of almost any animal because, uh, scientists think, because uh, of its very low calorie diet, because eucalyptus leaves really are not a very high calorie diet. So you would need a really low metabolism. Oh, I gouged myself cutting fruit for my oatmeal this morning, Lady Ezrith. I was, uh, Anne is having one of those days. Let's see, so I want a little bit of dark. I want, I want the corners around her mouth to be dark. I think I'm just gonna make all of this dark here. Don't think that you have to be absolutely precise in the way you're, you're um, you know, duplicating animal color patterns. You can take some license. Oh, another cool uh, koala color factoid is that koalas in the north of Australia have different color patterns than the ones in the south. And scientists are not sure if that means that we are dealing with different koala species or if um, it's just a color pattern, regional, regional color pattern that just the koalas have bred you know, in those areas for ages and just the color genes popped up more in one area. And so now the koalas in the south are darker. They can be actually a dark, rich brown and some of them are even reddish. They're very pretty. They almost look like red pandas when they're reddish. Coovs, you have a new appreciation? Well, good, awesome. Yeah, koala, sloths, uh, sloths, and pandas. All those low RPM uh, animals, right, painting dog? They just don't have a lot. Oh, we have a raid. <laughs> oh, who from? Is it nope. no cookies? Well, thank you for the raid. Thank you, Grin, for the raid. We appreciate it. We're painting a koala that will be on sale very shortly for our Australian wildfire relief uh, charity effort. So it's a great time to raid us. Thank you. Let's see. I'm going to do some of the, the ears as well. Just I'll go even darker with them, but I want to block them in darker to start with because I want to be able to blend it a little. So pretty much we're just blocking in darker areas, which we will then highlight or darken even further. And when we do that, we'll, t we'll pay more attention to where the actual strands of hair are. But right now we're just trying to uh, get everything kind of mapped out. And I'm using about a two to one. You can see that my paint isn't like blending perfectly. And that's because I'm using about a two to one paint to water. So it's thinner. It's not like super strong brush strokes, but you can still see the brush strokes. And this is because I want to get a thicker coat. If I went really thin with this paint, it wouldn't be uh, nearly as dark. And I wanted it to be significantly. You could see it. Yeah, my breakfast definitely fought back this morning. Sorry. It was the mangoes. They're slippery. Not only do we have one charity model, we have three. Yeah, we have many, Skews. actually. This is just the one that, uh, that I really liked that Ron gave to me to paint this week. And I'm going to be painting her all week. So today, tomorrow, and Thursday, and I'll probably even the Wednesday later in the afternoon show. Because we want to promote this for sure, because God knows they need help in Australia. It's gone crazy down there. I was reading um, about it on National Geographic site, and it's very alarming. You feel bad for all the people who lost their houses and all the animals that are running around and orphaned and just going crazy because their environment is completely self-destructed. It's just not good. If you uh, do go, like, to, I think if you go to National Geographic, at least they sent me an email the other day, but they do name specific charities that are working on um, fighting wildfires, so you can choose where to donate there, too, if you want to do even more. But we would appreciate it. If you do like the koalas, um, we will make sure that 
money gets to someone who is, and I'm, I'm actually asking, I'll ask where our actual charity uh, is when I have time. Obviously, I can't ask from here. Um, let me see. Let's do the back of the head, which is usually darker. We'll leave a little bit up top. So again, do you want to continue brush strokes in the direction of the fur, even if you are not concentrating on hitting individual strands or spaces between them? Yeah, Australia needs the help, that's for sure, Grenna Cookies. I'm just going to actually go across down here because this is going to be in shadow because the head curves out and then back down, so I don't have to pay attention to the direction of first quite so much with my base shadow here. And the back of her back of her ears will also be darker. Yeah, I'm glad it got on the national consciousness, actually. There was a time it was going on and nobody was reporting it on this side of the world, which is just something I hate. I mean, I understand that there's so much news around the world that sometimes it's difficult to report too much world news. But come on, this is important. I agree. Don't even get me started on that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, the there's American press just does not do a great job of, of anything un-American. So. I kind of agree with you there. And so that's why I actually am subscribed to things like National Geographic's news uh, emails and stuff, because then I know, because I care about the environment, it's one of my priorities, so that way I know I get informed. I just love animals, Yeah. generally speaking. Well, they actually, um, there was a guy who's out there who, who took a pretty iconic figure that kind of got it on America's radar, uh, who's a photographer who's essentially traveling around and inhaling a lot of smoke trying to document what's going on with the wildfires in Australia. I forget his name, but... Uh, Nat Geo did a, did a little feature on him, but he essentially took a photo of like, like while he was photoing a burning house, a kangaroo turned around and just terrified, just ran right in front of him. So he's got this great photo of a kangaroo just like at full speed, like silhouetted against a burning house. And when he put that sucker up, the New York Times gave him a call and essentially said, if you can get us a high res picture of that, we'll put it on the front page tomorrow. And that's where the coverage in America really got kickstarted is that that image, um, really spoke to somebody and somebody made the decision that no we need to put serious coverage on this so thanks to New York Times for actually recognizing that and being proactive about it even if they did you know get a little lax up to that point uh, bug loops are you guys having some some issues with snow up in Canada now so it's between the fires in Australia and snow in Canada yeah oh some f terrible weather freezing Ooh, freezing sub zero bad stuff up there and and like like telephone poles and trees crashing down and wow just deep freeze stay stay warm bug lips it's been awful I have friends but in Alberta don't be afraid to burn your loot if you need to <laughs> he'll probably burn his clothes before his loot Let's see here. Yeah, yeah. The eastern eastern Canada got hit a lot of a uh, lot of hard with snow. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. Welcome to extreme weather. Maybe we should stop like poisoning the planet. Might be good. The planet is fighting back. Yeah, Max. It's the uh, it's it's the internet. Yep. Yeah, actually, I just saw that, um, that again, on National Geographic this morning. So, yeah, guys, if you want to know, like, uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me if in the coming years National Geographic gets known for, like, international reporting, more so than things that are supposed to be doing international reporting, because I, I read about the earthquake this morning in Puerto Rico on National Geographic's uh, email network. So they've, they're doing a good job, Nat Geo. I really uh, believe in them. I've had a subscription many times over the years. All right. Uh, did Justin ban you, Max? I have no idea. I would never. Three days of digging out. Oh, wow. Poor bug lips, but you were a very good goblin to help them. I agree. That's, uh, that's admirable. I'm going to do one more. I'm going to mix another shadow, guys. So hold on for for koala, sh koala shadow number two. Actually, you know what, I'm just gonna grab, I do this a lot when I'm home painting, I just grab a bunch of paint that I already have and make a new well, and then add 
darker colors if I need to. Let's see, do I have, yes, I do have black. Boing. I want it a little darker. Up the koala is kind of, well, no, you guys can see it. So yeah, so now it would run really dark, but that's okay. I can thin it down and it'll go a little more transparent. If I have to, I can add a little bit more of my gray mixture up here. You can go either way. Either you can bring, if you want colors to blend together, you can either bring them closer to each other and use thicker paint, or you can just use a lot of water and thin your paint way down and that'll make it uh, essentially a lighter color or it'll dry light at any point. Let's see, that's pretty good, I like that. Close to black, but not like actual black. Using actual black on the dark area around the ears would be a bad idea. Uh, it's very harsh, especially since these colors are pretty, uh, pretty light, but this color is different enough that it should read appropriately. All right. Doo -doo -doo. Let's see. All right, little hope. Let's see, I need to make your ears significantly darker. I want to fill in your eyes. Probably should use actual black for that, but we'll at least uh, bring them in dark so that you're not a zombie. You do not want zombie koalas. Don't you dare assign that to someone, Ron. I, I usually will use any dark color to fill in the eyes first before I get to them. Just kind of get their orbitals going on here. We'll be doing her eyes in brown, but I just want to get them kind of lined in. And I'll probably do her snout too. A shiny, shiny snout. So I have a command now. Should post automatically, but uh, it gives the skews for the koalas. Oh, good. Um, I don't believe. Wait for my signal. Wait, Wait for, for my signal? signal. Uh, it's a super secret round signal. Oh, I already did. Oh, they go live. I literally just put part of them. They're not live yet. Oh, I know that. They know that. Okay. They're just going to... I'll give you the signal when they do go live. Okay, perfect. All right, so Ron's Ron going to give us a secret signal. Ron's going to give us a secret signal when they do go live. However, those are the SKU numbers. So you guys have the SKU numbers before any other person. On the planet. On the planet. And you will be us. here for the exact moment that it goes live. Yes, you will be. Well, as long as moment. you keep watching the stream. As long as you keep watching me paint koala nostrils, you will be here. Let's see what time is it. Oh, we got two minutes if it goes live at 1130. I bet they're hyping it. Let's see. I'm gonna, I'll also line her mouth. Like, this is something actually I pointed out to somebody just the other day on my Patreon because I give people feedback on the Discord if they post up stuff, um, if I have any feedback to give. And uh, it's always advisable if the mouth is well sculpted at all, to put a line, essentially the line of the mouth, the line between the lips. Um, it helps you add more expression and it makes the mouth stand out. So get your brush really fine, get a good tip. And don't worry if you mess it up, you can always just touch it up. That's why I do it early. Because here I've just really got a base coat there around the mouth. So if I get a little messy like I have, that not is, a big deal. That is correct, Hyper Bunny. That is absolutely correct. <laughs> Nothing goes live exactly on time with Reaper. Yes. It's Reaper time. Reaper now. Reaper soon. Soon to him. Yes. I'm actually going to fix my line. Now, if you get outside the lines, all you have to do is get your base color here, so the gray that I started with, and just kind of thin the lines that way. Just bring in, clean it up that way. It's the easier way to do it. I'm cleaning up her little mouth because I had to get a little bit wobbly. Even Anne's brush control needed more caffeine this morning. There. There. Uh, Nikos, I think, I don't know either of those, but I would, I would, uh, I would believe that since we're casting these in-house, there's not a quantity control, or not quantity control, there's not a limited number, 
Yeah, we usually um, do put a time limit on it because we, do, we yeah. have to actually put an end time on it so that we can legally make sure that all the appropriate amount of money goes to charity. So we Correct. have to we do have to end it at a point. Yeah. So um, whenever we I don't I don't know when we'll end it, but I imagine there's probably not a limited quantity. Um, yeah, you so can buy really, as many as you want up to that. Co correct. So, so which we you, encourage. If you want to buy a ton of them, buy a ton of them. Yeah, if you want to use it for a class mini for ReaperCon, like, you know, buy a ton. So then we make sure that the... Uh, so I'm going to essentially map out, as you can see, the little hairs up here. Get her, get her ears dark like they are in the photo. And again, I'm going to brush in the direction of the hairs. So since my... Um, since my strokes are pretty bold because the paint isn't ter terribly thin, you will be able to see the direction of the brush stroke, so it helps that you brush stroke in the direction of the fur. But yeah, I don't actually try to follow the lines of the sculpted fur until I highlight. Then I pay attention to that. Up to that point, you can kind of just let it go. My dog is shedded, shed, shedded on my fingers and it got trapped in my Band-Aid. That is silly. You can all see a piece of Kiri. Not there? Yeah. Here? There? Also Where? Kiri. Oh, also Kiri. There! We have Bear and Kiri. Whenever I reference Kiri, we now have a Kiri reference photo. I really should paint uh, a werewolf like Kiri one of these days. There. <laughs> Pug Lips recommends hoarding them because, yeah, they are really cute, and a few years down the road, people will be looking for them. That's happened with a lot of our past... Uh, relief fundraiser type models. There was a wizard that they did back, gosh, right after I started. It was probably in 2004. That was, I think, a hurricane relief one. He was a storm wizard, and people were looking for that thing for years. It was impossible to find. Because the thing is that once, um, because we've publicly said that proceeds go to charity, um, once we shut them off, we have to shut them off. Because otherwise, we'd be selling two, and we'd have to send, like, a, you know, one dollar to charity or whatever, uh, which would be ridiculous. So that's why there is an eventual stop to these uh, charity models. Do, 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 do. Let's see. She actually has a little bit. I'm going to actually give her some a little bit of spectacles, a little, bit, a little more spectacles around her eyes. But I think I, I don't want them quite that dark, so I'm going to mix them. I do this a lot, too, where I just do a spot, spot mix on the top of my palette of uh, like 50-50 and I'll try to keep these kind of want a little more spectacle pattern around her eyes it would be cute I'm sure there's a koala with spectacles out there somewhere that's it we need one of these koalas to have spectacles Jason you need to do a koala with spectacles Jason, Jason Weeby who sculpted these oh, you were no no Jason Weeby watches this, then he needs to know that he needs to, like, give me a koala wizard with spectacles. So it's very important. So just going to do some darker lines here to give her a little bit more uh, personality in her fur and her markings. Yeah, it's nice to have them around, like, I mean, they're nice to just trade to people, right? Like, if somebody else has a discontinued thing or a model you really like, and you have a koala, and they really want a koala, you could do an awesome mini trade off of that. All's fair. All's fair in loving koalas. Let's see, any more cool koala factoids? I'm trying to think about all the stuff that I was reading about them yesterday. Oh, apparently it's really hard to find out a koala's resting heart rate because, you know, they're trying to do this when they're looking at how low their metabolic rate is. And they found that it was impossible because they all have arrhythmias. So, and it's a specific type of arrhythmia that occurs when breathing and heart rate are not aligned, like they're not going in alignment with each other. So, what I thought that was funky too is that, that koalas breathe at a different rate than their heartbeat goes. And so you cannot figure out a koala's resting heart rate. Uh, Glenn, this is a charity model for relief uh, for Australian um, wildfire relief project. And to be released extremely soon, Ron is supposed to give us the high sign on this broadcast that these go live. We already have the SKU numbers, and we posted them. Up oh, there we go. Mubat just brought it up. 
Oh, no, but Ron hasn't given us the sign yet. That's just a skews, right? It's not live yet? Yes. That's just a skews. Okay. That's, that's just a skews. They're not actually live, but if you want to make a note of their SKUs to search the Reaper site and find them right away later on, you should write down those SKUs. I am getting more furred texture around her eyes. And actually, the tree rests up against her face. I should show you guys the little tree. Where's the little tree? Tree, there it is. Come here, tree. Let's see here, this one. So get up there, little tree. So she's kind of snuggling with the tree. She has it pressed up against her cheek. There we go, there's tree. There's hope in her tree. Isn't she cute? She's adorable. They are now live. Hatter13 says they're live. Ron forgot to give us the sign. Uh, Ron. Oh, totally put that soon up there. Yeah, that's a great, we needed that graphic, Justin. Um, it looks kind of like a boxwood to me, uh, just knowing bonsai, but uh, I'm not sure. But I think boxwoods do actually grow in Australia, so it could actually be one. Um, it looks like a boxwood, Nomad Zeke. So anyway, she's really cute, and there her, her little tree rests right there. Um, so I wanted to get her face. Obviously, I wanted to paint the stuff underneath that, because you can still see some of it. Whenever you can still see areas behind a piece and you know that putting that, gluing this piece into place would be, would make things very difficult, um, do, do paint under them, at least with a base coat. I usually do a base coat, basic shadow, and a basic highlight, and then I glue the thing into place. And then I just worry about additional highlights um, where the light is actually hitting after that. Uh, one thing you can see, though, hopefully, is that the more layers of gray color I build up around on her fur, the more realistic she looks. Um, you're essentially, because fur patterns are complex, the more complexity you work in, the more real they tend to appear. I'm actually going to put some darker color down here. I want to make her chin white, I think, so I am going to shade underneath it um, to make that stand out. I'll do like a 50-50 of my really dark color and the lighter one. Put a little shadow right under that chin. There are darker areas to either side of the white, so we can do that. Let's see, how does her snout? Yeah, it looks like her nose is lighter around the dark patch, so I'll leave that area lighter. Um, she actually has eucalyptus leaves on her belt, uh, painting dog. You can see them right here, and she has more attached to her pack back here. Obviously, these are snack packs. Hoops, I'm glad you're looking forward to watching my Patreon videos. All I am right. looking forward to making more of them. Oh, are we ready? It's not just Reaper Soon anymore? We have the high sign? There is a link to all three of them right there. Yay! Oh, and we just got a sub. Prime sub. Thank you, DM Thank Sky. Thank you, DM Sky. Actually, there have been several subs. Uh, I don't think I've announced them or caught up to them because I'm over here trying to... We will um, thank you all. Justin will go and make it his business. But look, yes, we now you. have the actual koala sale. Oh, with the RSPCA. Well, that makes sense. RSPCA South, South Australia is the benefit we are supporting, the charity we are supporting, the organization we are supporting. How about that? I'm actually going to line between her toes. Oh, thanks for the Twitch Prime, Holly. Yay, subs. Good to see she's tuning in. I catch her stream at nighttime occasionally. Oh, sweet. I'm going to line between the toes just to make them stand out a little bit more. I'm using just my dark gray that I used on the fur. That may, it keeps everything kind of homogenous and makes it look like it belongs there and isn't too stark. Although you certainly could use black lining on this model because she is very cartoony. Um, usually I don't advise black lining because it, does, it does, does tend to be quite harsh, but uh, it, it, it gives a definite cartoony feel. But if you are painting a model that is very cartoon, um, then black lining can work quite well. Let's see here. Yes, Jason Weeby did sculpt her, and she is carrying lunch around with her, Glenn. You have it in, you absolutely have it. That is, that is why it's, it's got to be a snack pack. Hope is supposed to be a healer, and then the other koalas are fighting fires. And what's that? I know we have a firefighter with an axe. Mm -hmm. What's the other one? Uh, let's see here. I, don't, I don't remember having seen the third one. It 
Rescue. Looks like it's a koala and a tree as I drop my headset. Oh, I uh, see. And a, a kangaroo. Uh, kangaroo. Kangaroo and a koala and a tree. Great. Jason does such great animals. I'm so glad he did this. He is a fantastic dude. Yeah, don't don't tell Bobby, but he's my favorite. Oh, well, that just makes his head get even bigger. Okay, then then don't tell him. <laughs> no, it's okay. Jason Jason's really cool. I, actually, I like all of our sculptors. I don't, yeah, our sculptors all a, do great work at this point. I mean, there's not a single one in the bunch that I think I couldn't just have a beer with, to be honest. Yes, well, unless they don't drink beer. In, including unless they don't drink beer, including yes. Rhonda. You could still a have a beer. You could still have a beer with them. They just wouldn't have a beer. Correct. Maybe you could have, have a beer. Yes. Rhonda, do you like beer? I think she's in chat. She was in chat earlier. Yay. I think we might need a little koala emote to go with our corgi emote. I'm just blocking in some dark fur on... Uh, what would normally be the top side of her arm. Got a little bit harsh on one side, so I'm going to use my shadow to blend that in. That's one thing when you're working with dark colors, you can always grab your mid-tone or mid-tone shadow color, and uh, if you get a little bit too harsh, like with your lines, like on the underside of this fur, uh, you can just grab a little bit of that and layer it in. And again, stick to the direction the fur is sculpted, and it'll look natural. So I got a little bit away from that here, so I'm going to cover my earlier dark line and break it up a little bit with my lighter color. Hey, hey Lady Azareth, that, uh, that may or may not be already pending and waiting for Twitch to uh, approve it. Which one? A koala emote. Oh, good. At least while we're doing the promotional. Sweet. <clears throat> koala emote. Huh. <laughs> And it worked, didn't it, Bug Lips? When you scream, take my money, Reaper listens. Never say we don't listen. I'm giving some darker fur on the back of the other arm here. Just because I want some variation, I'm sticking again to the fur direction. Do -do -do. They can take my money on Friday. Yeah, I feel that. They must wait for the paycheck cycle. It's okay. Reaper understands your paycheck cycle. And then get a little bit more. If it gets a little dark, I can always put a little bit of the previous color over it to break up the lines and still keep a little bit of a ticking, sabling look on the back of that arm. Let's see here. I'm trying to stay in focus. Oop, how close can I get? There we go, perfect. You can get closer if you want to slide your focus bar there. Yeah, I don't need, I just need it to make sure it's in focus so they can see things. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know, uh, Planer, you may have to work with Anne on that. She's huh? uh, she's definitely fantastic at our koala tree oh, control. Oh, don't even, you guys. And keep in mind, I like puns as much as the next person, but. Today I'm playing the role of my boyfriend, apparently, who really does not like puns. He's the only gamer I think I've ever met who does not like puns. It's just kind of, you know, you have to groan, though. It's not a good pun unless you, like, make people want to just, like, you know, dock you XP for it. Adding some darker fur to the bottom of her back of her neck. And I need to do the back of her ears, too. Do-do-do. Do-do-do-do-do. Do a little bit of darker fur, darker fur, in the correct direction. Remember to always end your stroke where you want it to be darkest. So when you start a stroke with thinned paint, usually it's a little bit lighter. And then as you pull down um, and as you pick up your brush, you usually leave a little bit of extra paint there, and that's what creates a layering stroke. 
So wherever you want to blend something in, that should be the start of your stroke. And wherever you want it to be darkest, when you're working with dark paint, that should be the end of your stroke. And that's what gives you that transition, just like you can see now in the back of the head. Paint Pokey out for delivery. These are Aussie puns, so you have to be OK with it, Planner Crossroads. I really love, I saw the Pokey tools in the Reaper store yesterday, and I love the fact that they have little cork, um, cork on the uh, tips, tiny pieces of cork to, uh, to protect them and you. It was a great idea, whoever thought of it at Reaper. And I'm going to get the back of her ears a little bit darker, except that I think I went in the wrong direction. Okay. Well, howdy. We have a lot of Aussies who tune in for my morning show. I like it. Do, do, do. Actually, I was just reading, uh, I follow Amanda Palmer, who's an indie rock musician. Um, and she was just asking, because she's touring Australia right now, she was just asking about Midnight Oil because she's a huge fan. And uh, essentially asking Aussies what their opinions of Midnight Oil are, because, you know, we're in America, we, we know what America, you know, knows about Midnight Oil, which isn't nearly as much as you guys do. The band, by the way. And I found out that Midnight Oil actually, like, got back together in 2017. That's exciting. I haven't looked to see if they have a new album, though. I do like 80s music. Ron Hawkins here at Reaper also is a big 80s music fan. Can pretty much tell you like the album and year any given 80s song, you know, came out, Ron can. And apparently Ron was never a goth though. I mean, I, I, I prefer to think that somewhere in some universe there was a goth boy, Ron Hawkins, but apparently not. Adrian says he didn't goth out. So disappointing. I would tell people he didn't either, although I, I suspect he did. <laughs> I just like to imagine Ron in, like, Fishnets, uh, Doc Martens, and, like, you know, Black Mascara. I can't, I just, I don't know. There's just some part of me that believes in some reality that was a thing. I still vote that if something crazy happens, like, we get 2,000 subs, Ron does an episode of Reaper Live like that. Dressed up as a goth? Yes. That would rock! Yes. Ah! Goth Ron Hawkins could actually appear. I used to have a pair of Doc Martens that were electric blue that I would totally have loaned him, too. I'm just doing a little bit of darkening to bring the back of the ears uh, more in line with the front of the ears. Leaving the tips a little lighter though, because there's probably some variation. Someone please Photoshop this. Actually, Bob, is it Bob, isn't it Bobby Jackson who's the terrible Photoshop king? Or who did the awful, there were some awful memes that came out earlier. Um, it, was, I, it was artist talk, but somebody did a horrible set of memes involving Ron and Bobby. Yes, I don't know if you were in that email chain. As an as an honorary artist person, I, I got involved, and there were things in that there were things photoshopped in that email chain that should never see the light of day, that you cannot wash out of your brain. I think it was around ReaperCon. It was very bad. Maybe Ron had a ska phase. Oh, proper goths are all have a certain sense of humor. Rhonda, come on, come on! Wouldn't you like to see Ron have to dress up as a goth boy for the for the stream? I think that'd be awesome. We could, we could pretend we were hosting a segment from 120 minutes, those of you. That totally dates me, for those who watched that show on MTV. <coughs> Let's see here. All right, so the back of the head is looking pretty good. Nice shading. The ears are looking more natural, fantastic. Yeah, I did alternative. I was never, never goth. Um, but I did like, I did like, uh, there's a good do goth industrial dance club in, uh, Dallas that, uh, I used to go to with friends called The Church. It was, uh, Thursdays and Sundays, I think, downtown. All right, so the top of the head is really pale, and I have to decide if I want to keep it there, if I want to put a wash on it, because it's going to be a little harder to make that fur stand out unless I go up to white. Maybe I'll try to use my off-white mix here. This is actually bleached linen, 9436, and a little bit of the weathered stone. 
9087. I was going to use this to undercoat the white portions of the koala bear before I highlight it in pure white, but I could also use it to highlight. Yeah, Lizard Lounge, you got it, Grouse Yeti. No bad, Zeke. You're just a little bit more archaic than the rest of us. Yes, Glenn, back when MTV actually played music. Although I only watched 120 minutes because I wasn't into mainstream music at that time. I was a big fan of The Cure. Before The Cure was popular. I actually was really sad that I missed the reunion tour a couple of years back because apparently it was amazing. He was grunge way before it was a thing, Vigos. Yeah. Hey, Celtic boar. Yeah, hey, Celtic boar. Welcome Celtic, to, welcome Celtic. Welcome to the stuff. Yeah, Celtic, I believe. Celtic. I mean, properly. It's Celtic with music and Celtic with basketball, right? <laughs> uh, actually, yeah, I think that's accurate. Usage. <laughs> I'm going to put some lighter fur in the middle of his, her ear now. So since you're new, Mr. Bohr, we are doing a benefit um, for uh, Australian wildlife, wildfire relief, and we are selling these little cute koala bears, and there is a link to the actual things that Justin could pop out in a moment if you wanted to since we have a couple of new people we just started selling them less than what 10 minutes ago so basically yeah yeah we previewed them and i'm going to be painting little hope here um this week on my shows we've already sold thousands oh wow that's really not, that's not real no oh i have no I, idea i don't know depends on how like blasty on social media other than here we went we've sold a couple i imagine well, Buglips bought at least 50, I'm sure. I imagine our community is so amazing and supportive that uh, that every every single viewer in this chat has bought one. Oh, God, I remember Warrant. I remember people in my high school having freaking T-shirts. Oh, I never, I never got it. Although, to get the word out, we may send uh, some of these to our sponsees to get them to paint them on, on stream if they can. Sponsees, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I'll uh, talk to uh, Collins by getting some shipped out. And I'm just doing little tiny hair strokes. Uh, again, I'm going to try to follow a fur direction when I do these tiny strokes up next to the nose, even though here it's smooth. Um, you should always continue to, to suggest a fur direction, because there is fur there. It's just uh, too fine to have been sculpted. So do always keep in mind when doing animals that even if it's sculpted smooth, suggesting a bit of fur texture there gives you more realism let's see and the eyes are going to have a little bit of pinkish around them but i think i'm going to start them with this lighter color so i'll give her i need to add more water whenever you're trying to do that whenever you're using a thin brush and your paint is not coming off of your brush it means you need to add water to your mix guys this is the the sign you retweet, we retweeted the tweet? Thank you, Silverthorne. Yeah, well, Silverthorne, I retweeted your retweet. Of the oh, tweet. my gosh. Don't go down. Like, you're going to get into that weird, you know, what is that movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? Inception. Speaking of which, uh, Road Dog, the Miniature Monday sets, the the main set is all as is on sale. Kit 1 is on sale as well as the core palette. So both of those are... Uh, there's not a giveaway today, Billy. Um, both of those are on sale. I believe there's SKUs are 95,000 and then 95,001. I think I actually have a, uh, a link for that as well. For direction. She's starting to look really good, I think. Her fur's coming right along. Yeah, we don't do giveaways on this particular show yet. We haven't figured it out. Like, we want to do something more unique um, and in line with the toolbox thing. So we're kind of seeing how popular the show is, and then if it is popular, then we can look at what we'd like to do for giveaways. That and, and it puts a lot of pressure on Justin, extra pressure on Justin right now to do the giveaways. So we're trying to give him a break. So he can actually, you know, do his job. Yeah, we're trying to streamline. Yeah, that's that's really my problem is between streaming and uh, giveaways. It leaves little room for stream improvement, hardware improvement, that kind of stuff. 
yeah, he has all these other things he needs to really do to keep us competitive. And Since the crew up here is essentially just uh, myself, uh, Collins helps, but it's basically just me. Yeah, Collins uh, has his own work to do, too. It so. is. It is a uh, full speed ahead, like 90 miles a minute uh, type job, but I love it. I will say that. I do love it. It keeps you busy. Thank you, Crusader. Right, no problem. Here. Um, thankfully, there? though, uh, I do not have to ship out the giveaways anymore. I just have to process them. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that is a that's a big help. Is internet going to help you with that? Yeah, they're the ones shipping them, Sweet. and they have been now for about a mm, couple of weeks now. That's very cool. But the 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 process for verifying people and and their giveaways. Yeah, and you stuff, still have to do that. And manually punching the stuff in can be uh, time consuming for sure. All right, I'm going to actually use a couple of lighter hairs up here. Just kind of get a little variation in the stark area. And then, and now I am paying attention to where the fur actually is sculpted, guys, when I'm doing this. So I'm starting to put highlights in on dark fur to make it get that salt and pepper look like the koala in our picture. Um, then I'm actually paying attention to sculpts, to the sculpt and where the fur, fur oh. sections are. Also, Road Dog, I believe the February set's going to be up really soon, like maybe by the end of this week. So just uh, keep a lookout for 95002, I think is what it would be called. But we'll likely put out a, uh, a, a message on our social medias and such when we do. That's a good question, Iliad. Uh, was the Lord of the Jungle not released, Dan? Do you know? I have no idea. You're part of the production meetings. Um, I'm not, actually. Oh, you're not? I've, yeah, Sadie is uh, being encouraged to do that. You were lucky enough to get out of those? I was lucky enough to get out of the production meetings. Did I tell you not that long ago, Dave was like, why aren't you in the production meetings? And I was oh, like, no. I, I, don't, I don't need to be, Dave. I don't produce anything. I, yeah, no, <laughs> that no, would no. be your response. It's like, I don't, I don't need to add that to my, my list of meetings per week. Yeah, I, Sadie goes and then she reports back to me on uh, stuff because she's more directly involved. I do inventory still, but she's more directly involved because uh, we're getting her uh, just pretty much, I, I'm training her in all of my job. So... Um, Max Powers, uh, I'm working with John on the Discord, so we'll see. It, it should be the bare, bare bones version of the Discord maybe up pretty soon, which is just channels and maybe password locked areas. But I need to work with John on, like, different tiers for stuff. Here we go. We got some fur. Got some more fur. Dr. Bob, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm everything. I'm the videographer. I'm the technical director. I'm the producer. I'm the, I'm the things. I'm the, I'm this department. He basically. does many things. All the things. All the things. But my job would not be possible without the fantastic talent that I put in front of the camera, as well as Collins' assistance. As well as all of you, because when you sub to us, and that's the thing, there may not be a free giveaway today, but when you guys sub to us, that proves to our bosses that doing this is worth it. So never think that your sub is not valued, even if, you know, maybe we don't do a giveaway for this show yet. Um, it really is valuable because it, it tells them, yeah, we should continue to do this. We should funnel more resources into it. You know, we should get you guys more content, all that sort of thing. It's very, very dependent on, on making this work for us. So thank you for everybody who is sub to Reaper. Oh, yes, that's absolutely 10 out of 10. Completely agree with Ann there because honestly, what validates my efforts up here uh, to the company in both uh, my own personal achievement is our subs and our support from our community. Yep. The fact that we could build a stream community that uh, eight months ago had six people watching at any given point to now having 100 per show or more is amazing. Yeah, sometimes so. even 400, apparently, at Reaper Live this last week. So that was an exception because we did awesome paint department Audrey things when David Baker was here. But yeah, we do some cool stuff. Actually, yeah, Max, go ahead and do that because I, I actually, the more we grow on Twitch too, I'm going to be looking at... Uh, regulars or something for people to help mod twitch as well as you know mod for uh for discord so it's one of those things where uh yeah we, we definitely need mods. we have to start kind of reaching out and 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 getting support from the community and some of this stuff because we just can't uh we just can't do it all there aren't enough of us yeah there aren't enough of us it's we're outnumbered and our plates we're, are... we're gonna lose homes deep we gotta we gotta hold off <laughs> yeah help us be our elves be our Peter Jackson yes, be, elves. Be our, be our Peter Jackson elves, please. Um, and thank you for the sub. Welcome, Tor, Tarf, Torf, Tarf, yeah, Tarf, 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 Tarf. Uh, thank you for the Tower raid, uh, Valandor the Red. Raid. No raid notifications? 
Mm, or it, did you turn them off because we get raided so often? I, you know, that's a good question. I think I usually do for the painting streams. I'll check. I'm going to do eyeballs. Sometimes they just glitch out and they don't work. But, yeah, I think they're off of the painting stream so that nothing gets in the way or nothing is distracting because people are often watching this and listening and that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, that's true. You don't want a whole bunch of sound alerts uh, interrupting things. I'm going to do the eyeballs real quick and then we'll actually cap it for today since it's been a good hour. Let me get my eyeball color. Ooh, my arm is going numb. I must have had it in a great position on my chair. All right, let's do let's do eyes. So the color that I tend to use for animal eyes is 9109 ruddy leather. Um, it's a nice it's that nice warm reddish brown amber color. Um, I agree to get a stream of blood 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 yeah, bug lips painting all of his bones vibe. I don't know. Um. Usually chalkiness is going to be over, I want to say over thinning, Chris Air. Um, you should never thin them more than, more than one to one. So let me double check that real quick. I've got pure white right here. Is it pure white particular that you have problem with or just whites in general? Because our, our whites do vary in pigmentation. But here, one drop of that. One drop of water. We also officially now have a banner across the main page for Ooh, the... Ooh, uh, a banner across the main page to advertise the koalas and kangaroo. Correct, where we link our products as well as the direct Let's link see. to the RSPCA if you want to donate That's pretty directly. good and would not be chalky. I'm, I'm troubleshooting white for, uh, for peeps, for Chris Air. Uh, whites in general. All right, so that's one to one. And on this, I'm just going to put it on her dress real quick, even though. So for this, I'm going to bet. Nope, that's just you know that's perfectly good. No chalky. Now I could go up to two to one, but I I think that the maximum there's definitely a maximum load of of water that you want to be thinning with, and when you exceed that, you get chalkiness. So you kind of have to creep up on it and see what you're trying to do. I also find that if you do get chalkiness, Chris Air, the other option is to just glaze. Like if you're trying to do skin tones, for example, if you, if you start with tan skin and you've just been adding white to get highlights or add going up to fair skin or something, try glazing again with your tan skin and you'll find the chalkiness goes away. All right, so again, yeah, two to one. Two to one layers up really well with no chalkiness. I'm going to go up to three to one. There definitely is a point. Chalky is kind of, it, it's kind of like, yeah, the paint kind of breaks a little bit, Dr. Bob. It, it's, uh, it creates kind of a texture, kind of a rough texture, streaky texture, uh, and almost always is a result of too much water. Um, you can sometimes cut that if you're using flow improver with your water. You can sometimes mitigate the chalkiness. I'm using three to one now with white, pure white. Let's try to layer that up. But I am using some flow improver mix. I have some flow improver mixed into my water just because I like to do it. Now this may, this may break a bit. Let's see. Nope, nope. I think three to one. As long as I'm not using very much paint on my brush, I can get this to layer up just fine. So ask yourself about what technique you're using. If you're getting streakiness and chalkiness when your paint is pooling, use less paint on your brush. Because I've got this pure white at three to one. Now pure white is our most heavily pigmented white. So it could be that whites with less pigment, there we go, we're getting a little bit of graininess there. There was just a little bit. So I think if I went to four to one, I would be chalky. And, usually, and probably if it was a white that was not pure white, I would get chalkiness. I'm getting a little chalk, a little chalk. So a little roughness. Um, not quite as smooth. Yeah, it can do that too. Although chalky with too little thinning, yeah, then you're seeing brush strokes essentially. You're getting roughness. So, uh, it varies, right? And it, and you're, you need to look at how much you're loading and unloading your brush also. Uh, when I had more paint on my brush, I got streakiness. So when you're doing really thin paint applications, you have to load up your brush 
you know? But then you have to unload almost everything. Like, I won't layer, let's use the Band-Aid. I won't layer until there's almost no paint coming off of my brush, but I can still put down really fine layers. That's how you get really fine blends, actually, is with really thin paint with almost none on your brush and just building it up slowly. But yeah, if you, uh, chalkiness is, is variable. It's usually the white pigment fighting you a bit because it has a very high opacity. And it can also be the paint base breaking if you're dealing with thin paint. So yeah, so there you go. Stuff like that. All right. Let's see here. I was gonna do eyeballs, right with 9109 ruddy leather because it's a great animal it's that great amber color that dogs and horses eyes have and a lot of other animals um so i tend to start with that and just paint in if i want them really bright i'd underpaint her eye a little bit i'm going to start just making it dark though i'm just going to paint the amber the ruddy leather right over everything I don't want to under, I decided not to underpaint her eyes in white because I uh, want it, the fur around her eyes is white. So I, I do want it to be, her eyes to be pure dark. So I'll put them over a darker base coat. Nice warm brown, very friendly color. And it doesn't show up great on this. So I'm going to actually do a highlight. Um, you can add any orange or yellow to highlight ruddy leather for eyes. Let me see if I can get that on the camera. There it is. It's hidden by toolbox, there it is. So if I want, I can grab, just do a drop of lantern yellow, 9407. Carry over a drop of the uh, ruddy leather mixture and get a lighter golden brown color. I can use that for highlights to kind of bring the iris out a little bit before I do the, uh, do the pupil. So I'll put it at the bottom where the light would catch. And then I'll do her pupil in black. You can also use things, something like walnut, brown liner, things that are near to black. And then we'll do a spot reflection because her eyes are nice and big. So let's do a pupil. Sadly, this is not showing up fantastic on camera, but do, 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 do. just catching up on chat here real quick. Okay. Nice. And when you're doing eyes, obviously you don't want to put the pupil right in the middle of the eye because it's going to uh, make it look like it's staring. So I always connect the pupil a little bit to the top of the eye, which is a more natural look. It makes her look like she's looking up because her eyes are so big. So then you just have to figure out, make sure she's looking in the right direction. She's probably looking up at you because you just painted her to say thanks. Thanks for buying me and helping Australia. Because she seems like a sweetheart to me. Also, real quick, uh, thank you Trash Rama for the emotes. Um, I already uploaded them. Uh, they're pending. We have like six new emotes Ooh, wow. that are pending now. Dang. I'm not so sure when they'll go through because it's Twitch. It's but, Twitch. You know. Also, this is a reminder that we're now approaching the one hour and 10 minute mark. Yep, I know. I was just going to try to do a spot highlight in the eyeballs. We went a little long today because we were doing an actual, you know, ongoing project instead of a, a one-off painting tips thing like we usually do. Um, so I'm going to just line a little bit around the eye because it got a little rough up here. I'm going to use pure black, thinned down, up, and yeah. Uh, oh, I can do eyebrow, eyelashes. There's a good idea. That would be very silly of me, but I wonder if she looks good with eyebrow, eyelashes. He <laughs> he Not convinced, but maybe. Maybe she gets eyelashes. Uh, yes? Batteries. Not my battery. I was going to say, my battery is fine. We're good to go. Okay. Good? Your battery is fine. But the transmitter batteries were not. Oh, no. Are the transmitter batteries back and good now? They are. All right. I'm going to do a spot highlight. Yeah, you guys didn't miss anything, by the way. I had to uh, mute the sound to fix the battery so it didn't Let's see here. Out. I think I want the spot highlight to go up and a Doc little bit Dr. Of an Bob angle. figured it out. There we go. 
You want the spot highlight to be in the same place on both eyes. It's a little hard because these are kind of buggy. And I made the one really, really bright. Nope, koalas do not have large eyes, but these are cute. So because they are cute, they have bigger eyes. Kind of like chibis. There. Made my specular highlight a little small. <laughs> Those are unintentional eyelashes, but I think I'm going to put eyelashes on the other side too. But anyway, guys. Um, oh, and I can brighten up the highlight underneath the pupil if I want it to stand out a little bit more. Take my yellow gold and just kind of put it a little thicker. Make a little highlight down there. And I could even go a little lighter with the... Uh, add a little bit more lantern yellow to that ruddy leather and bring it up a little bit more. You don't want to like totally change the color of the eye, but you want it to be visible. So yay, she's pretty. She's very nice. I like Hope. She's coming along. Yes, they are, but these have big eyes, so we're painting big eyes. Next time we'll probably do the little bit of flesh color around the eyes and we'll do the flesh color in the nose and then we'll probably start, I want to get the hands and feet done, but I could probably do that on my own time and then maybe we'll start with the blue. Um, I kind of block in some other colors I got to figure out. I think I'm going to use a yellow to go with the blue because I like yellow. All right. Excellent. So I'm thinking that this is about done. Anybody have any questions? before we uh, call it for the day and Justin can run off and get himself some food. Lunch is until one, unfortunately. Oh, that's right. That's right. I We're just early. have uh, some other emails to tend to and other things. Actual work? Actual what? work. Yeah, I know. Crazy, right? Like, I have to get the, uh, the, eyelashes. the upload from yesterday going. Oh, right, right, right. Yes, now all the shows are coming. There we go. She's, she's so cute. She has cuteness going on now, now that she has eyes. Yeah, the, the thumb will be back. I mean, you know, I have a mutant healing factor, apparently, so. Yeah, she, re she regrows thumbs. Yeah, I regrow thumbs. But yeah, I think Hope is turning out pretty well. I think she's pretty cute. She looks like a koala to me. Uh, yeah, you can send them to John Plano, or you can send them to me at ReaperLive at ReaperMini.com. Um, either one is fine. Remember to spread the word about koala love and kangaroos and like refer people to our new fundraiser. Just making a darker line around the eye to make it stand out a little better. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy. She looks like a koala. So awesome. That's what we... <laughs> WKRP, oh my God. My Midwestern childhood just like reared up in my head. I remember that show. <laughs> Yay, social media shares. Thanks, guys. I think these are terribly cute. I hope people really like them. Yay. Hope the koala says, thanks for watching, everybody. Q101. I don't remember. That's a long time ago. Koalas smell like you, well, they smell like what they eat. That would make sense. Oh, I don't, just don't remember. Lordy. You guys are like going too far back for my brain. I can't do this at like, you know, noon. <laughs> can't even remember. Oh, yeah, we didn't get Chicago because I grew up in Bristol, just over the, uh, the border. So I, I had to really try to get Chicago radio. Um, some of the stations got up there. We got more Milwaukee stations a little bit better. Tape on the floor down the paint department. You guys. All right. Obsolete or ancient radio stations of the Midwest is now for 500, Bob. That's what we got going on in chat. So, <laughs> all right, guys, since we have no questions, Hope wishes you a lovely day. Thank you for spreading the word about our fundraiser. 
and we will resume tomorrow uh, at 11 a.m. Central Time. And, uh, and yeah, we'll probably continue at that point with her dress, I think. Justin, anything to add? Uh, no, I'm finding a... Uh, finding a, somebody to raid? Finding a raid, yes. Yes, we're oh, finding somebody cute. to raid. Hi, here I am. Yay, Hope. She's looking good. I just need to lighten up her paws a little bit. We're Line around them. Oh, I love you too, Planar Crossroads. Thank you. All thanks, right, everybody. And thanks again to everybody who like, signed up for my Patreon. Patreon.com slash Painting Bake. We're going to raid uh, Jimmy the Brush. Easter and IQX. I also went to Bristol Ren Fair for years. We're going to raid Jimmy? Yep. Awesome. And uh, make sure to spread the word, guys, about oh, uh, yeah. the koala minis to Jimmy. Yeah, tell, t tell Jimmy about the koalas. That's a great idea. And uh, just keep being awesome, guys. Yeah. That's so, effortless. Our, our people are always awesome. They don't have to try. All right. Well, uh, we will see you guys later. Yeah, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Well, have a great one. Later well, today. If you're Justin will see Tuesday. you later today. Yes. I will see you tomorrow twice. Remember, my new, new afternoon show goes at 3 p.m. now. So, all right. Getting ready to raid in five, four, three, two, one. Bye, everybody. Thanks, guys.